Welcome back on the show today. So I'm so excited about this part of the show. I can categorically call it my favorite part because the person in the studio with me today is someone that I find so wonderful. I would love to call her enticing, Aww. but then that's going to be me objectizing her. So I don't want to do that. But you trust me. I know I'm saying she's enticing. Her name is Dr. Tolu. We call her the fixer. And she's the provost of the Institute of Counseling. Now, when somebody becomes that... And you say you can't respect them. I'm wondering what your problem is. Mm -hmm. Dr. Tolu, welcome on Hello Nigeria. Thank you for having me. You're making me to blush. <laughs> <laughs> how, how was your day today? You look very lovely. Oh, really? <gasps> Thank you. Hey, I this mean, woman. it's just a no makeup day. <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. You're not even actually wearing makeup. No, no, no I'm not wearing makeup. Because <laughs> we are too fine in this continent. Anyway, today we're talking about the pros and cons of relationships. Mm. Now, a lot of people have come to that point where we're having marriages breaking, we're having relationships breaking. Yesterday, we had um, Lara Kudaisi here on the show. I, you know, she talked a lot, she shared a lot, she was open about a lot of things. Mm. And even after the show, I went home and I had people asking me, can somebody literally go through that kind of thing and still live? Wow. You know, when she was talking about 14 heartbreaks, 15 abortions, wow. a failed marriage, wow. despite being a matchmaker. And everybody just went like, you can't be that. Yeah, about her? Yes. And she was that open? Yes. Interesting. I you mean, you can't be all of that. And you would still have a failed marriage at the end of the day. How mm. did that happen? How did you get to that point? And now we're saying, what are these things that we are doing wrong? Why are relationships failing too quickly? Gone are those days when people had to wait for six months a year before they would break up. Now, people are in a relationship even for years, and you realize that one person knew from the beginning that they weren't going to end up with the next person, but they just stayed to use them to, you know, my mom will use the, the word milk them dry mm. and just leave them there, mm. you know. And sometimes life just happens. Mm. So what are the things that we should look at when it comes to relationships? Okay, so um, how do you mean, you're talking about the pros. why people are yes. uh, breaking up now? Yes. Okay. Um, I think uh, people marry for the wrong reasons. And I think there is one very underlying issue. And maybe because I'm a counselor, I'm looking mm. at it from that perspective that, you know, um, I tell people these days that your wife is no longer like your mom. She's not, I used to say she's not like your grandmother, or she's not like your great grandmother, but she's not like your mom. You know, and you see, I think there's something about, you know, a culture that make a man to want to, like, a man should be the head of the house, you know, provide for the family. And, you know, so there's a, a level of, there's, there are, there's demarcation, let me put it from mm. what is expected from the man and what is expected from the woman, you know, in our culture. But now... Whether we like it or not, development is coming upon us. The social media people are, people are, I mean, information is everywhere. And so things are changing. And the earlier we realize that things are no longer the way they used to be, the better, because the roles now are getting interwoven. The men now are sitting at home and babysitting the kids. And the women are going out to work unlike the way it used to be. So you don't think because you are an African man and a woman has gone to work and you say oh, it's the work of a woman to take care of the kitchen. She has gone out from morning to night and she's coming and you have been at home. You're still expect, expecting her to go to the kitchen. It was working before because her parents in those days as a mother, they sit at home. Even if they have to still go to the market or do, but they, they have their time, they are in control of their time, unlike a woman that is working. So men need to realize that, that that is changing. The tables are turning, actually. And again, look at in the area of intimacy, you know, women know their needs now. They know what they want and they want to go for it. So, and it's not like, oh, these women are becoming wayward, like we used to say. No, it is because development is coming upon us. And, you know, so all the cushion effects that were there in, the, in those days are no longer there. Like, Right from childhood, they are, I mean, they used to say that it's a whole community that take care of a child before. But now, these days, you, you can't even do so. The, the uh, street wisdom or whatever you want to call it, all the things that people are getting from the street, you can't, I mean, I can't have my five years old before. My five years old can run around. I mean, 
one kilometer away from home and then somebody will slap, somebody will give a car, somebody, you know, you just get all, a lot of experience and then you come back home, you are shaping better for it. Mm. But these days, how do I allow my five years old? You know, when I know that there are people who are, who are ready to pick up a child for rituals, who are abusive, you know, predators everywhere, I can't do that. Now, those wisdom that those children are picking from the street, where are they getting it now? You pick it up from them, from childhood, to teenager, to adulthood, we, we are losing a whole lot as a result of civilization, but we don't have the cushion effect. Mm. I'm very glad you mentioned the kids because I wanted to ask a question relating to that. So recently somebody shared the story with me of when she was growing up, she was 14 years old, and she went to visit her aunt out of Lagos on holiday. And then she was in the kitchen with her aunt and her cousin who was a girl. And then her aunt's husband comes back and he calls her from the kitchen. She comes into the sitting room and he tells her, um, go and bring room to sweep this place. Meanwhile, his son was there mm. sitting by his food mm. and watching television. Mm. So from the home she was from, there was freedom of speech and expression. Mm. So she was like, why is he sitting down? Why can't he be the one picking up the broom? to sweep the sitting room, mm. and he messed it up in the first place. Mm. And, you know, there was an opera. Mm. He cried wolf. He mm. said she was disrespectful. Mm. And then she said, if that was going to she be the case, um, she, she wanted might to go back the, home. He's a guy, so, so he's not supposed to sweep. That was what he said. Mm. Now, I'm asking this question. We have people having relationship issues. My mom would always say that, you know, you know that um, marriage doesn't have issues. It's the people who come into the marriage that come in with their personal problems mm, and then create I, I issues agree. there. I agree. What should we do now? Because we know the grown-up people are not getting it right. How do we train humans who would learn to respect the opposite sex or whoever they end up in relationships with when they do, or even marriage? Hmm. So I think, uh, like I said, you know, um, things are changing, whether we like it or not. And the cushion effect is what you are looking at. What do we do? I am looking at the cushion effect. Now, because before, I, I will go back to that again. Now, now, in a family like that, you have your aunt, you have your uncle, you have grandma, you have everybody, you know, the, everybody is in your house. But these days, like, you know, I said that recently, I don't know, in an interview, if you put to bed now, for example, in an hospital, um, the, the next, they will be telling you that, oh, no, there is no bed, you know, you can actually go home. But before, you see your, your, your mother-in-law is the one that brings pepper soup, your aunt will bring this, your uncle will bring this, and you know, who cares? People are busy. Your mother-in-law is in America, your mom is in London, nobody. Now, so what do we do? So there are lots of things, all those close family, community relationship, where what was helping. So what do we do now? We look for the cushion effect, and I will always talk about counseling. I will always talk about the fact that we need counselors. There are child counselors who understand the language of children. There are teenage counselors. Teenage year could be very, very difficult, but there are teenage counselors who knows how to make this uh, kids to talk and say what is bothering them. They are relationship counselors. They are individuals counselors. You have issues, you have whatever it is. I used to have clients, I mean, I used to have a client, for example, who just like, who, she would just walk into my office and be like, Dr. Tolly, you know what? Don't say anything. And then she would just talk and talk and talk and I won't even talk. She would just talk and then she would like, oh, do you, I'll see you some other time. And then she would just go. You know, sometimes people just need to talk. Yeah. Sometimes they just need to get somebody to listen to them without judging them. All right. So I think what we need to do is to start cultivate the habit of talking to professional counselors in every area, in different phases of life. And, you know, looking at parenting, massive, massive. When you're looking at the boy child, the girl child, massive. I mean, most of the time these days, we, we, we train the girl child, we train, you know, don't sit that way, don't talk that way. Dude. And then we dump, we dump an untrained boy at a doorstep. And then how do you expect marriage to work? with that kind of a baby who is supposed to be trained, that is not trained, and that you give, you, he got married to a well-trained daughter. The marriage is still not going to work. Mm. Dr. Soli is releasing a lot of bombs and shaking tables today. <laughs> and I'm here, and the studio is on fire, but don't worry. Our phone lines are open, and you can actually join the conversation. I actually feel it's important that you do. Um, Dr. Tolu, 
I'm happy you've mentioned these things you've talked about now. So some people are saying, I've met some men who know that they need fixing. Mm. And they actually show that they are willing, not just men now, mm. even women. Mm. Because we have different things going on. You know, I've seen cases of women battering men mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. and not just the men doing mm -hmm. it to women. I've heard the table are turning. Very seriously, <laughs> you know. And there are a lot of things going on that somehow the male gender feel that they are being pushed so much to the extreme. Sometimes, me, seriously, I don't envy them. Everybody's talking feminism. They are finding it difficult. Yes. Because so, they are so used to this men are in charge thing. And it's, it's, not, it's not working. Come on. It's no longer the way it used to be. We just need to say the truth. And I don't envy men. Men are going through so much, really. Because I think as Africans, there's a way their brain has been wired, you know, through parenting. You know, it's not like it's biological. Through parenting and through our cultural values and religious upbringing, it's a way they've been made to understand. But when they start seeing realities that these things are not looking like the way it used to be, you know, they are finding it difficult to adjust and come on some. And there are women these days too. Ah, the women are not taking it easy. Really? <laughs> okay, from your perspective, what are the three most, you know, challenging things in relationships? Like, mm. what are the three things that cause problems? In okay, I mean, I think people know a lot about that. You talk about communication, you talk about uh, finances, and you talk about intimacy. Okay. But if you ask me, I would say intimacy is massive, it's a major. Money is not as major, communication is as major as intimacy to me. Oh, why? Okay. Now, tell me, you see, the bond that, I mean, I know it's, this is an evening, so I can't, people that know Dr. Tolina need to turn it down. But I tell you, you see, when you talk about intimacy, it affects Dr. every Tolina, area. Dr. Tolina, please hold your thought. Okay. We're going to say, we have Ibuka calling from Lagos. Hello, Ibuka. Welcome to Hello, Nigeria. Good evening. That's my friend, Dr. Tolina. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, Ibuka. Good evening. <laughs> nice to see you here. Yeah. Welcome. I actually want to contribute to the program. Uh, Dr. Tolo, I followed you a long time, like you know. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, you see, like you rightly said, oftentimes we concentrate on the female child, leaving out the male uh, a child, which is not proper. I think both of them need counseling. Mm -hmm. When we actually concentrate on the female child and leave the male child, the female we get it all, why the male one actually loses out. Because it's, it's the male child, we eventually get married. And when you get married, what has he learned from you as parents? What counseling have, I mean, have you given to them and to him as parents? So even when he's married, he's not knowing the right thing to do. Why the female child will ever go to the, uh, to the husband's house and behave very well? So we need to counsel both uh, males and the female a, 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 a child or children, right. you know. So that's my take on that. I mean, they need a lot, mostly the teenagers these days, like the said. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ebuka. Thank you so much. Straight to the point. And a lot of knowledge coming from mm -hmm. him, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you were talking about, you know, um, intimacy. Yeah, so I said, you know, intimacy, as, as, as simple as my look, could... Uh, let me give you an instance. I mean, I say this a lot of time on my show. Like, if you are a man, especially for the men, and, you know, you're trying to maybe satisfy your wife, and I'm talking about intimacy now, and the woman is making you to feel like you are a nobody, you are not good, you don't know how to do it, you are just a very, you are just a, you know, you feel, when you feel you are not capable in that aspect of your life, you feel very little as a man. Now, so even if you are the CEO of a, of, a, of a multinational, when you leave that your bedroom with your wife and you position yourself, even as the head of your parastata, you still, even though they are saying, oh, welcome, sir, the boss, everybody is hailing you, in your mind, you are still seeing yourself as very little. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't remove that, that thing. So intimacy is so powerful that if you feel so uh, or, um, little, let me just put it that way, by the time you move to your secular world, I mean, you move to your job, you deal with other people, you still feel that low self-esteem. You carry it everywhere you go. So intimacy affects 
everything about you. It affects the way you relate with people. It affects even for women. If you are looking out for something and you are not getting it when it comes to intimacy as a woman, you can't perform optimally. There's, that's why a man, the man could buy you the world, give you everything. If you feel like that aspect is not good enough, come on. There's nothing you can do. The woman, I, I used to say that um, uh, a woman who is, let me, I could say that, I mean, I, I don't think that is too much. A woman who is craving for orgasm and not able to find it is like a time bomb waiting to explode. Mm. That's a, that's a huge word. Yeah. Now, still on intimacy, we've had people talk about what you just mentioned, and they tell you, oh, I love this person, I adore this person, but I just don't know how it happened. Talking about cheating now. Right. And it, it's like it happens in a second. Mm. And then when it's done, you literally see them saying, I wish it didn't happen. Mm. Now, we have those who have made cheating a habit mm. and a lifestyle. Mm. And we have still have men and women who say they wish it never happened. And mm. a lot of the time, this one-time thing or sometimes one-night stand, mm -hmm. as it's being called, mm. could actually shatter a relationship, mm. shatter a marriage, Agreed. bring in an unwanted pregnancy, right. something. Right. How do we get read of situations like that. Mm -hmm. uh, cheating is, has always been. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, it's getting crazy now. Now, before you used to, people believe that cheating is a man thing. Women don't cheat. But I tell you, women are beating the men to it now. Now, the problem we have is, I, I'm going back to what I've said before, is the no cushion effect thing. You know, the cultural values that guide us, all those things that used to guide, they are eroding away gradually. Now, so people have problems and they don't talk to professionals. I tell you the major reason why people cheat. I could tell you from experience, from research, and from daily, I've, I deal with so many clients. I could tell you the major reason why people cheat in Nigeria is because of intimacy. Mm. The major reason, because they are not getting the satisfaction they are looking for in their marriage. And it's not about money. And most of the time, so people say, oh, uh, there's no good reason to cheat. Fine, agreed. You cheated because you want to cheat. But there are triggers. There are things that if you have worked on it, these people might actually not cheat. Okay, there are times that couples feel like, I don't want to cheat. I don't want to do this. But this person is craving for something and is not able to get it. And, it feel, and the person is feeling like, there, so there's no solution anywhere. And the person is feeling oh, the right thing to do to solve the problem is probably to cheat. But it could be worked on if they take the right steps. All right. Dr. Tolu, hold on to that. We have Samuel from Lagos. Hello, Samuel. Hello. Oh, we lost you, Samuel. Please, if you can get back to us, please get back to us. Now, you have told us the things that could happen, likely triggers for this situation. Now, even aside, you know, these triggers, what about different issues? We have religion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, these days, one of the things we are seeing is in marriage counseling, very few churches talk about intimacy as well as, as, as little as possible. They don't really talk about it. Not that they don't know it's important, but they just tell you, be obedient to your husband, do mm -hmm. this to your wife, and all of that. And after all of this, we still have marriages that break. We still have relationships too. Maybe they don't get that kind of counseling, but it doesn't fall through. What are we doing? How do we get to that point where we can now acquire adequate counseling that would help? Okay, I will say that. People should understand that. Like I've said, I mean, internet is there. So there's nothing like, uh, I don't want to flow. You have to flow along with development. So people need to understand that proper counseling is what they need. And I'm not talking about, fine, it's good to do your church counseling, it's fine. But come on, go look for a professional counselor. And then they, I'll tell you the few times I've done primary counseling in my, uh, in my office, I will tell you that those couples, if they have gotten married, that marriage, in fact, is, it's, already, it's already dead on arrival. If they have gotten married without coming for that uh, uh, clinical counseling, you know. So, and then I think we need people to, a lot of people around us have passion for counseling. I think they need to start coming out more, you know, right. get education and take up the society needs. All right, Dr. Solu, so still hold on to your thoughts. Hello, Eugene. Yes. We have Eugene from Lagos. Hello, Eugene. Welcome How on the doing? show. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, uh, as we got, uh, am, I, am, I am I online? Yes, you are. Okay. 
Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Well, uh, the contribution I have to make, contribution I have to make is that uh, it's money. Your guess is just around the bush. Money is just the cost of the breakages we have in marriage right now. You understand? Finance. The truth of the matter is that uh, no money, no love in Lagos. And that's one of the, most of these uh, young girls, they opt to marry the big boys, the VGC bees, the Lekki bees, the uh, Banana Island. And by the time they get there, the satisfaction you are talking about, sexual satisfaction, is no more there. Because the man believes that you are here, you are in already because of money. So the man still plays out. That's why you cannot uh, run away from this thing you are talking about. So the problem is from the ladies. Everybody wants to live big, bright, flashy car, fine. But you have to pay for that. So money is just the real cause of breakages. All right, thank you your so guess, much. Your guest sitting there, I mean, most girls cannot marry a school teacher or something. They want to live big. So they All have right. to pay for it. Thank you. All right, thank you, Eugene. Thank you so much. Let's yeah. have Lizzie. Hello, Lizzie. Wilson, my name is Wilson. Okay. Wilson. Please, can you turn down the volume of your television? Yes, my name is Wilson. Welcome, Wilson. I'm calling from Nicolodo. All right. She just, uh, Dr. Tolu, I greet you. Thank you. Good evening. Yeah, I follow you up Tuesday and Thursday. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, please, uh, just as the last caller just said, because you wonder what happened to the days of our parents when our mother and our father we marry and they will live 70, 80. No, there is no divorce, and the children will grow up and become what they have to be in terms of training. At times, just as the last caller said, it is because maybe ladies are after, okay, money and one and this. Because in those days, our mother, they did not even go to. Let's assume, the, let's assume that the world has civilized more than all that. In those days, our parents did not used to go to marriage council or so. They only believe on their religion or whatever they are serving. They say, okay, this thing says this is bad and the is bad. This is, this is bad. And they keep their house in order. But these days, you see what happens. Maybe because of the civilization, the ladies and even the young guys are after, oh, I want this, I want that. And which is not, which does not make a relationship to last. And All right, thank you so much, people. Wilson. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We have Samuel on the line. Um, hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Aww. Oh, sorry we lost you. Now, he made a point. Wilson mm -hmm. made a point saying that finance, money, and, you know, and he took us back to the days of our parents and said then people lived together. But really, my question is, were they so happy as... The picture was that, being that's, painted that's, to be. You see, the same thing, like the two colors, is actually, they were actually saying the same. He, he actually answered the question. He said things are changing as civilization. It's the truth. When they're happy, we men now understand that they need to be happy. So you can't tell them that, oh, uh, you stay because of your kids. In fact, I mean, I see couples now that come for counseling. I mean, look at the people b below 30 now. I mean, even people like us, all these 40, 30 and above, 40, we are still modest. The, the below 30, what you see, I mean, you see couples telling you, I'm done. Doctor told you I'm done. And I'll be like, how could you be done? Like, just like that. You see, it's getting more terrible. And it's because people are aware of their needs, of their rights. So you can't, and they want to be happy. So they will do anything to be happy. So you can't tell them, ah, eh, you know, stay now because of your children. No, they tell you, I want to be happy and I want to live my life. That is civilization. So when does counseling come in to save the situation? That is what I'm saying. Now, he's saying that it was working. It was working then. I, I have described this. There were community. There were families. The old village were there to chastise you. There were, you know, if you do something that is wrong, you won't be able to walk in the streets. You know, the villagers will take you to the uh, village square. And all of those things are, I mean, where are they? You know, so you need a counselor. The counselor is like the cushion effect that like I'm talking about. And talk about child counselors. A lot of parents are having issues with their children, with their teenagers. Then before you move to marriages, you move to people who are grieving, you move to crisis, the, the field of counseling is massive, close to 500. Everywhere you go to abroad, you see counselors who help people to keep themselves together. Now, civilization is coming upon us. We are not looking at this. We are feeling, oh, uh, my father, I mean, we used to do it. It's no longer working. 
we need to we need to understand that, that this has to be done the right way. And quickly, let me mention about the guy. I mean, men. I I don't want to say too much about that because I can't even change their mind. Every day, I wish I could change the mind of men that it's not every woman that is looking for your money. Men, so I mean, Nigerian guys especially have this belief that as soon as whatever, let me just make money. When I make money, I will get every any woman that I want. Is that not what he said? That they, they marry the big man and then later they will start cheating. It's beyond that. Because I tell men, it is better. I'm not saying don't make money. It is better to pursue a good woman than pursue money. Because when you make all the money, you marry a bad woman, it will ruin all your efforts. She will ruin all your efforts. So come on, pursue a good woman. Because if you marry a good woman, the journey, the speed of your life, the journey, the speed is going to increase. And the fact that you are going to live your life happily, the, the, the possibility is very high. But the point is, people, especially those who believe that uh, they have passion for counseling and all of that, I think it's high time they start stepping out. Start looking at the different field of counseling and start doing something about it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Tolu. I've learned a lot and I'm sure our listeners too have. Do you have any oncoming projects? Yeah, I am currently now, like you introduced me at the beginning, I'm currently overseeing the Institute of Counseling in Nigeria. I'm trying to advocate for people to like join the Institute of Counseling. The society needs you. Help people, help be a child counselor, be a marriage counselor, be a sex therapist, be a grief counselor, a bereavement, massive field and emptying in this country. So I'm telling people, I'm advocating for that, that people should look out for the Institute of Counseling and pick up their passion, dust it up, because this society really needs you. Thank you so much, Dr. Tolu. It was so great having you on the show today. It's our How business. can people reach you? How can people follow you on social media? All right, they can reach me on Intimate Talk with Tolu. Uh, whether on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, Intimate Talk with Tulu. And of course, they can visit my website, instituteofcounselingng.org. Of course, you've heard, and that was Dr. Tolu, the fixer. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.